So it's easy to go on your phone. How about putting artwork on your phone? Just like this. I've used a few photographs I've taken. So what you're going to need are your images printed out on some paper, a sponge brush, a pair of scissors, a Stanley knife, phone case, a marker and pencil, some craft glue. If you're making this project at home, your Stanley knife and scissors are very sharp, so make sure there's an adult to help you out. Let's get started. So I've picked a couple of photographs that I've taken on my phone. I've got some birds in the sky, a beach scene, the sky at sunset, and our cityscape. I use my own photographs, but you can use some of your own drawings or even some cutouts from a magazine. So I'm going to use these to make a cool design on my phone. So I think I'm going to choose the sunset, some parts of the cityscape, and the beach. So the first thing you need to do is pick the photograph for your background. I'm going with the orange sunset. I'm going to flip it over, grab my case, place it over the top, and just outline it with my pencil. Be sure to draw out any holes or buttons that you may have in your case. So just cut around following the outline. Once again, these scissors are quite sharp, so make sure there's an adult around to help you out. So the next step is, I'm going to cut out the little outline for the hole. I'm going to use some corkboard on the table and my Stanley knife. Once again, these are super sharp, so make sure there's someone to help you out. And now just pop that out. And now you have your background. So let's start on our design. With this image, I'm going to look over it and see, we, see which parts and which elements that appeal to me. I'm going to cut out a few different images and see what works. Let's contrast it with something else. I'm going to use a beach scene. So I'm going to grab my phone case. Since the waves are going to be the base of my case, I'm going to place it over again and draw another outline. Again, grab your scissors. Just go nice and slow. So they are quite sharp. I'm just going to cut across and just follow the lines of the wave. And I'm just finishing off by cutting down the line there and curving back in. And there we have the base. So just play around with your different elements until you come up with a design that you like. So I've decided on the cityscape behind the waves and the orange sunset as the background. Now let's stick them down. Grab your sponge brush, dip into some strong craft glue just get rid of any excess and just coat a thin layer of glue over the case. Make sure you cover the entire surface. So your first image is the background. Use the base to line it up and just press it down. Grab some more craft glue, get rid of any excess and just coat the photograph now. So let's paste down our other images. I'm going to use the wave that's going to be at the front as a guide. And with the cityscape, I'm just going to slide it in behind it and press down. Then with the wave, I'm going to just cut a light layer of glue, line it up at the bottom and press down. Now, don't worry about these bits of white. We'll just brush them out. I'm just going to coat the entire design with a thin layer of glue. Now, to stop it from peeling later on, Put a thin layer of glue over the edges just to connect the image and the actual side of the phone. So I've used a couple of photographs, but I want to add my own little touch. So grab some blank paper and your marker, and I'm going to create a speech bubble. So I'm going to start with a line going down and across, coming back up, going across, and we're drawing a little pointed section just up there to close off the bubble. So I want to give it a 3D effect. So I'm going to draw a second line just to the left-hand side of the bubble and to connect it like so. Let's create a cool effect to it. Create some small, short diagonal lines all the way back to the top. So I'm going to write a word in there. I'm going to write the word PAP. P-A-P. -P. Cool. Now that's all done. Let's cut it out. Just follow the outline. All right, let's stick that one down. Let's get rid of any excess. Glue off the sponge, coat the case. Find where you want to place your little artwork. Just press it down nice and gently, and then just put your final coat over the entire design. And to stop
stop any peeling later on, just glue over the sides with your sponge brush. And don't worry if it looks white, it will dry clear. Now leave it to dry for a few hours, or maybe overnight, just to be safe. Cool, so it's completely dry. There you go, your own personalised phone case. Whoop, gotta take this one. I've been creating this lantern all afternoon, and now for the moment of truth. Let's see if she floats. Oh, thank goodness. Now that I know it works, let me show you how to make one. So to make your floating lantern, you'll need baking paper, paint, glue, styrofoam, tea lights, a ruler, pencil, bamboo skewers, a paintbrush, sticky putty, scissors, sticky tape, and a stencil. Now the first thing you need to do is to measure out your baking paper. My one is already measured, but you need a long sheet that's 53.5 centimetres by 30 centimetres. All right, so the first step is to measure 1.5 centimetres on the edge of the sheet. Now I'm going to rule a line through it. We know that that's where we will fold our first crease. Our next measurement requires us to make four markings each 13 centimetres apart. So now I'm measuring 13 centimetres along the bottom. Because there's a little bit extra, I'm just going to trim it off. So using the dots that you just measured out, we'll align across. Including the first crease I made, you'll have four lines in total. Now we can start folding. So to make your first fold, we're going to fold our sheet of paper in half and then open it up and then from the short sides, we fold in to the centre crease. And we'll do the other side as well. And now we just unfold and then you'll have four panels. One, two, three, four. So now you've got all your creases, flip your paper over to paint on the outside. Now I'm going to do a stencil in the centre and then leave a panel and then do another one here. Grab some gold paint and add a bit to my pot. So you just want to use a thin layer of paint and also keep your stencil really still. So now for the unveiling. Set it aside to dry. It should only take about 10 minutes. Whilst that's drying, let's make our base. So you just grab your styrofoam, which is 15 by 15 centimetres. And now your bamboo skewers, which you will just place on the corners of the styrofoam base. Careful with the skewers because they can be sharp. Now you have your base and your beams. So now I'm just gonna grab my battery powered tea light and turn it on. And then I'm gonna grab my little bit of sticky putty, stick that onto the center of my styrofoam base. Set this aside and then grab your dry baking paper. I'm adding a line of glue on the edge here. Get the other end and then stick it onto my line of glue. And just make sure that it matches up. So now we're going to add some sticky tape on the inside just to secure it. So that's all stuck together. Let me just grab my base. So now we just place the paper chute onto our beans. Now we just have to wait for the sun to go down and then see if she flips. Okay, let's send them out.
Hi, I'm Joel Coleman. I'm a professional photographer. And I spend my days going on creative adventures and taking photographs like these. As far as style goes, I'd say creative adventures inspired by the sea. My inspiration comes from nature. I've always grown up by the sea, and I love being around the ocean. I love surfing. I love diving. All things to do with the ocean. When I see scenes out there over the water, and that moves me a little bit, And that's what I try and relay to other people. There are things in the ocean that can potentially eat you. Sometimes it's a good idea to get out of the water when they show up. But so far I've still got all my fingers and toes. I started in photography when I was in primary school, I got my first camera, and it was just a little point and click. I just walked around and took some happy snaps with that, I suppose. I got the film back and I was like, wow, this is, this is really fun. I am up before the sun year round. Uh, I can't help it. If I miss that period of dark going to light, that I've, I've missed out on the day. I'm scared of missing out. Get my teeth brushed, get dressed, look out the window, see what's going on, and then decide at that point where I'm gonna go and what I'm gonna do. I am a bit of a lone wolf, I suppose, when it comes to my photography. I like to be out there on my own. Probably one of the reasons I like photographing the ocean so much. Photography for me and why I do it is because I'm really passionate about it. I really enjoy doing it. I love being out there with the camera, in nature, and taking photographs. The equipment you need to be a photographer nowadays is minimal, uh, which is brilliant. And you can get started with a mobile phone or a really, really entry-level point-and-shoot. My signature photo would be, if you asked anyone that came into my gallery, it would probably be these kind of foamy, shorey, splashing type images. And I get bored. Like, if I had to do the same thing every day and produce the same style of images, I would get bored. So I try and work on a style, know that I've, I've done it to, to the best of my capabilities, and then move on to the, the next project or the next style and, and try and really get my head around that and produce something that I'm proud of there, and then move on again. If someone's gonna criticise something, let them. No one's ever built a statue to a critic. You're the one creating, you're the one producing. And if you're not making mistakes and putting stuff out that, that people don't like, it's because you're not producing anything. I want people to remember me as the person that produced a photograph that they hung on their wall because they felt a connection to that image, that time or that place. My parents were very encouraging of me being a photographer. I didn't really give them a choice. The most important thing to remember when you're taking a photograph, I think, is just to enjoy that time in that space. My number one tip for someone who wants to get into the photography game, I'd say, would be don't let anyone that gave up on their dreams talk you out of yours.
Harajuku is an area in Tokyo, Japan that is known for its outrageous style and its kooky knickknacks. I picked some up when I was there last, and it's my inspiration for this crazy clock today. Now, the most important thing for this project are these, these little figurines that you're gonna place where the number should be on the clock. Now, I just picked these up from a toy shop. They're actually strange little erasers, but you could use anything like an old button, bits of an old toy, jewelry, anything at all. Now, what we're gonna need is obviously some figurines, a clock face, a paint sponge, a pencil and ruler, paints, clock hands, a clock movement, a drill and a hot glue gun. You'll need an adult's help with these last two. Now, the first step is to make a hole right in the middle of the clock face. So let's rule it out. Now, here's a little handy trick. Just get your ruler from one corner to the other and mark in the centre and then repeat on the other side. Okay, that's right in the centre. Now, you need to get an adult to make a hole for you. Today, I'm going to use a drill. Okay, moving on to our next step and it's time to paint the clock. Now, the colour I've gone for is light green. It's neutral and it's going to make my figurines pop. So I'm adding a bit of white to the green paint just to lighten it a little bit. Just mix it through well. Now I'm using a paint sponge today because it gives a more even finish. You won't have any brush strokes. Now I want an even finish today, so I'm gonna give it two coats. Now the paint's dry, so let's get your figurines in place and then glue them. Now a little trick I use is get a ruler and you work top to bottom. So there's our 12 and our six, and you just keep going the whole way around the clock. Now just make sure you're happy with the placement. You can always swap them around, but that is looking pretty good to me. All right, now we're gonna glue everything in place. Just remember to have an adult around because we're going to be working with a glue gun and it can get really hot. So let's start gluing. So I'm going to do two little bits of glue here because they're little headphones. You don't want to see the glue, so the trick is to hide it. And then press it just down firmly and it will hold in place. Oh no, it's going everywhere. Don't worry, you can pull the glue off at the end. Now this glue dries pretty much straight away, so let's get our clock moving in. Now you might think it would be a hard thing to find, but you can get it at nearly any craft store. Okay, so we'll just screw the nut off. Just thread it through the back. Time to put the hands on. And there we have my finished clock. Woohoo! Oh, time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs>